But Gollum, dancing like a mad thing, held aloft the ring, a finger still thrust within its circle. It shone now, as if verily it was wrought of living fire. Precious, 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 Gollum cried. My precious, oh my precious. And with that, even as his eyes were lifted up to gloat on his prize, he stepped too far, toppled, wavered for a moment on the brink, and then with a shriek he fell. Out of the depths came his last wail, precious, and he was gone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. These are some of my favorite parables of Jesus. There's an excitement about what the kingdom of heaven is. There's a homeliness and an earthiness. He's speaking, note, to farmers, to cooks, to fishermen, and to anyone who's ever dreamed of discovering unimaginable wealth that he hasn't had to work unimaginably hard to, uh, to earn. And there are twists throughout the passage. The first is that the sower is only sowing one seed. Mustard seeds are tiny, with a diameter of little more than one millimetre. The shrub grows up not to the tallest tree, but to a height of three metres, or ten feet in real money. It may not be the largest tree, but there's certainly some growth there. You would normally sow seeds, scatter them around, grow shrubs, lots of them, and sell the proceeds. So a decent farmer's going to spot that here, the man only took one seed and sowed it. Similarly, any decent housewife, or indeed, after lockdown, Anybody who knows anything about sourdough, which seemed to be pretty much everyone at one point, anyone would know, would have jumped at the story of the unleavened bread. Three measures of meal. A measure didn't just mean any old measurement, it was a specific Jewish measurement, which, thanks to Josephus, we know was one and a half Roman modii, or approximately 13 litres. This gives us 40 litres of flour, enough for 50 kilos of bread, or eight stone. And that's a lot. Now Jesus isn't saying that there's an impossibly small amount of leaven going in to make a miraculous amount of bread. He's not talking miracles today. He's using hyperbole to catch their attention, rather like opening a sermon with a quotation from Gollum. But both stories tell an important tale that something impossibly small and insignificant, like a farmer or a housewife in occupied Galilee, even hidden away in the ground or in the flower, can affect a change utterly and spectacularly greater than anything which could have been imagined just by looking at it. And then we get to the precious parables. The kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in the field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth the field. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchantman seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now, what do you notice here? The kingdom of heaven is like the treasure which the man has found. The kingdom of heaven is like the man seeking the treasure, the pearls. The kingdom of heaven is both. That's what makes this parable so wonderful. The kingdom of heaven is the treasure that you found and that is so wonderful that you turn your whole life around to, to, for it, sell all that you have for it, buy whatever you need to buy for it. We know the story. It's the basic story of any religion. Do what you can to get into heaven. Or I suppose phrased slightly more indulgently. Heaven is so wonderful that you should do all that you can to get in. So far, so normal. But the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man 
selling goodly pearls, who found that pearl of great price and sold all that he had. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant, in which case, who is the pearl? You are the pearl. You are the pearl of great price. You, for whom the kingdom of heaven is willing to give all that he has to buy you, to redeem you, to save you. That's not the normal story of any religion. Not at all. This turns the basic story of religion on its head. It makes you and me and all the others around us not just the humdrum human beings seeking how to avoid uh, going the way of all flesh, but it makes us into pearls, pearls of great price, pearls of such unimaginable price that the creator of the stars and sea became a child on earth for me. Precious, even. Precious enough for Christ to be willing to fall into Mount Doom for. But in a good way. In the best way imaginable. That's why this is such an amazing parable. Because it subverts everything we're supposed to think about religion and God and heaven. And it does something else clever, too. It conflates the kingdom of heaven and the actor to such an extent that it's rather difficult to tell the difference. The kingdom of heaven grows like a mustard seed, yes. But you are the mustard seed. You in the singular. Two in the French. One seed, not a handful. It's not just the church will grow or the kingdom of heaven will grow with so many souls. But that by being a part of the kingdom of heaven now on earth, by being the kingdom of heaven, you will grow in here. Some of us have grown round here as well, but that's a different issue. And you will change others too. You will be the leaven that will, that, that will cause an, in, an unimaginable number of people to grow as well, to be transformed into the bread that the parable uses. You don't know the impact you will have, the impact you are already having on people. But you will be changing lives, soul by soul and silently, her shining bounds increase as the great hymn goes. And her shining bounds increase because of you. And you will be seeking out that treasure that is the kingdom of God. Not just heaven, not even heaven in this case, but the kingdom of God that is, contra the French, other people. And all this is because you are the pearl of great price. Love thy neighbor as thyself, says the Lord, but to do that, or rather to do that well, you must love yourself. You must know that you are loved. You must know that your value is such that the Lord of all sold all that he had to save you and that it was worth every penny. Amen. Amen.